Hello, and thank you for joining the webinar, Reinventing Retail and Banking to Deliver Safe and Exciting User Experience with AI Biometrics. The retail and banking industry share a number of similar issues as changing consumer habits and the COVID-19 pandemic are shifting the balance between online and offline. Those industries are facing challenges such as reinventing the customer experience and building loyalty, fraud and authentication, and security and health and safety, just to name a few. AI-based technologies can help take on these challenges, and our speakers today will share innovative solutions that can create safe, secure, and enjoyable experiences, both online and offline. Before we jump to the presentation, I wanted to let you know that you can ask questions to our panelists in the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel. Take a moment to find it now, and we'll answer your questions at the end of the webinar in the Q&A. By way of introduction, I'm Jim Roddy with the RSPA. That stands for the Retail Solutions Providers Association. My official title is I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing, but I also work as a business coach and an industry analyst, and we share data through our trusted advisor podcast, the RSPA blog, and we also produce several industry reports. So I'll serve as your host for today's event, and let's go around our virtual room and ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, Richard, first, please. Hi, I'm Richard Carrier. I'm uh, the head of Cyberlink for the Americas and uh, the head of global marketing for our company. Great, Amar. Hi, this is Amar Qureshi. I'm the CEO for Cybersoft. We're very happy to be part of the Facelink uh, Cyberlink uh, webinar. Uh, we'll be we'll be showing our products today that were are in response to the current COVID pandemic. We are very happy to be here. Thank you. I want to share with you a little bit about the Retail Solutions Providers Association before we share uh, some insights we gathered from our community uh, with you. So the uh, RSPA is North America's largest community of value-added resellers, software developers, vendors, and distributors, and the markets that we play in predominantly are retail, restaurant, and grocery. So we're a fit for any organization that's serious about growth in any of those markets. And so many of our companies have been members for decades and we also frequently add startup tech companies because we accelerate their growth and they see the massive ROI that RSPA membership offers. I won't go into all the details in terms of uh, how we make that work and all the different benefits, but if you're a technology solution provider and you're serious about growth in the retail IT channel, uh, just email membership at gorspa.org and we're proud uh, to uh, have Cyberlink as a uh, member and they provide a lot of thought leadership content and engagement. So join Cyberlink, join our community uh, through membership at gorspa.org. Okay, wanna share with you some key technology trends. And before we get into sharing some of those details, the overarching theme that we've been hearing uh, is adapt, rebound, and accelerate. And those are the words of Michel Sirois. He's an RSPA board member. He's also the president of, of Blue Star Canada. But him saying adapt, rebound, and accelerate really, I think, uh, crystallizes what we're seeing, um, what's going on out in the retail IT sector uh, right now. You can't sit still. You've got to make sure that you're adapting and again, then rebound, and not just rebound and get back to where you were, you've got to accelerate to move forward. And to do that, there are a couple key areas. So uh, we're gonna dive into those. Everything contactless, and then also everything about the customer experience. So let's first talk about everything contactless. And so you can see we list uh, the technologies here that our community has told us that their, uh, had, their merchants are asking about, that they're talking with their merchants about, and that they think uh, are um, you know going to be popular going forward as well uh, beyond COVID. And you'll see a lot of, are, are sparked by COVID as well. Just the whole contactless um, you know, thought process is that uh, before folks were comfortable with shaking hands and being up close and personal, they're trying to avoid that. And so some of the technologies you can see listed here, antimicrobial covers, uh, AI is playing a role, uh, cashierless retailing, uh, that's again, probably in some of the higher end stores, a lot of technologies required to do that. Uh, contactless payments is almost, um, you know, uh, adopted uh, very widely throughout the industry that we're seeing, as well as curbside and drive-through. Uh, we're also seeing digital signage uh, is coming up that folks want to use contactless self-serve 
kiosks uh, that are tied in with that. So that's one that's uh, trending as well, as well as e-commerce enabled retail management systems. Uh, really, if you want to be in the retail sector, you've got to have some sort of online ordering capability. Also, facial recognition, we're hearing about that as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, in the program. Also, we're seeing loyalty integrations as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as well. We're also seeing a lot of peripherals, and you see that in the next bullet talk about tablets, even though those involve contact, if the associate has those, right, then they are gonna be able to uh, help out the customer as opposed to everybody congregating uh, at the point of sale system. So again, the peripherals plus the tablets are able to really spread out that contact with the associates. Then we're also hearing about UVC, you know, ultra, ultraviolet light disinfection. I haven't seen those widely adopted, but those are really starting uh, to become more popular instead of at the retail place spraying down the counter uh, every time. So again, everything contactless, uh, that's a big trend that we're seeing. And then we're also seeing everything about the customer experience. And so before I share some details for that, uh, what we're seeing is personalized and interactive in-store experience. Those are really important to both attract and retain customers. It can't just be the same old experience that they had before. Now, if a customer's experience isn't personal, they're going to be uncomfortable. They're going to feel like you don't know them. If they don't feel safe, either whether it's in person from a COVID standpoint or online from a security, a cybersecurity standpoint, they're going to feel uncomfortable. So if these potential customers, if it's not personal, the experience, and if their experience isn't safe, there's going to be no customer loyalty to that. So what we're stressing here is, and what we're hearing from our community, don't overlook loyalty programs. And here's some statistics to share with you. So first, 69% of consumers say the choice of retailer is influenced by where they can enter customer loyalty and rewards program points. So they're not just going and shopping where they can get stuff or they're not just shopping wherever they have been in the past. Loyalty programs are really steering them uh, to one retailer or another, one merchant uh, or another. We also see 57% of consumers join loyalty programs in order to save money and 37% percent join to received uh, join to receive rewards so again make sure you're not overlooking loyalty programs oftentimes it's not seen as um, part of the must-have but in this uh, day and age and from what we see uh, from the behavior of customers it's something that you you definitely want and so let's talk about some of the customer experience technologies that you need to watch out for so we have four main ones here so the first one is smart digital signage, and that's with dynamic content management systems. So, uh, you know, digital signage back in the day was just simply a TV screen with something scrolling on it or just some static image that was right there. But again, it really has to be dynamic and, uh, you know, do, uh, you know, help out the, uh, the folks who are in the store and help them out really understanding what different offers could be for them, how they get around the store, things like that. Again, really has to be dynamic content. Also, we're seeing interactive kiosks. We touched on those earlier. So that's both for ordering and then also for getting product information and self-checkout. So before kiosks used to be, you just might gather some information and then walk away from those. But now they're kind of acting as all-in-one point of sale systems, informational systems, and order management systems. Uh, also mobile companion apps, mobility is a big thing. And often the mobility, the apps on there can complement everything else that's going on from an in-store or online standpoint. And then facial recognition, a few things to talk about there. It could be used for automated VIP and loyalty member recognition. It can also be tied in with personalized uh, digital signage and the kiosk experience, and that can be based on the user's demographics by reading that from the, the facial recognition standpoint. Uh, also, uh, it collects statistics on the shopper uh, as well. I just heard somebody talk about a technology that is not gathering analytics and data on the customers. They called it um, dumb technology. And I was like, wow, that seems pretty harsh, but it's versus smart technology as we talk about smart digital signage. Uh, and then you want to make sure you're collecting statistics as well. Also, facial recognition can be used for mask detection and also a temperature check. Uh, and that's especially important uh, when with COVID-19 hanging around. And even if COVID is behind us in the rearview mirror at some point in 2021. There's still going to be a lot of folks who are feeling uncertain and worried about a, a resurgence. And so just by having these, these technologies, it can help folks feel 
more comfortable. All right, so that was just a quick overview that we wanted to share with you about some retail technology trends. Again, if you're a technology solution provider and you're serious about growth in the retail IT channel, uh, we'd love to have you as part of the RSPA community. Just email membership at gorspa.org. Now let me pass it to Richard from Cyberlink to share some innovative technology. Richard. Let me tell you how FaceMe is reinventing retail and banking through facial recognition. First, what is FaceMe? It is the world's top cross-platform AI facial recognition engine. It is extremely accurate with 99.7% accuracy according to NIST, the authority in the space, but it doesn't stop there. It is edge-based, which means that it's extremely fast. It can perform facial recognition in a few milliseconds compared to several seconds for legacy cloud solutions from other providers. Because it can all be run at the edge, it's very secure. There's no need to send people pictures or information on the cloud. It's also optimized across all platforms that matter. So Windows, Android, iOS, several flavors of Linux. And it's also optimized on top of that for uh, different form factors. So PCs, servers, mobile devices, IoT devices, and uh, depending on uh, different sets of uh, chipsets. So all the combinations of features, platforms, hardware can provide the best possible performance. FaceMe features, if we talk about our SDK that is very flexible and runs on all the platforms, it can do face detection. So recognize if there are faces of people in front of a camera. It can recognize people when matched to a database where typically people would have opted in to provide uh, their face details. Uh, it can uh, recognize facial attributes such as mood, age, gender for statistics collections or personal, personalization of experiences. It also includes image pre-processing. So if you have poor lighting, poor camera quality or other issues, it can improve the quality of the facial recognition of the image that's captured to minimize and eliminate bias. We have anti-spoofing features, so you cannot place a photo or a video in front of a camera to try to simulate somebody else's identity. And also it uh, performs mask recognition and detection, so you can find if somebody is wearing a mask properly over their face and if it's a proper mask, but it can also perform with very high level of accuracy. We talk about 95% can identify someone even when they are wearing a mask, which is pretty important today. Here's how it works. Okay, so today I'll present you two solutions that come as software, FaceMe Security and FaceMe Health, so respectively to address use cases around security and COVID-19. And I will present a number of cases that are relevant to retail and banking. So FaceMe Security is an out-of-the-box software that you simply install on a workstation of a sufficient capacity and to IP cameras. And then there you go. You can start uh, doing facial recognition for security purposes, matching people to uh, their record in a database, uh, whether it's employees, visitors, uh, block listed people, unknown people. There's also a plugin that can add uh, health features. So detect uh, if people captured by a camera, it could be many people if they're wearing masks properly over their mouth and nose can perform recognition of these people. It can also, if connected to a thermal camera, measure body temperature. And in all cases, it can send alerts. So this solution come, uh, as, as can be bundled with uh, hardware. It's uh, relatively easy for any IT department or small business to install 
in their facilities and it's quite scalable. You can literally connect hundreds of cameras to face me security. Here's a demo. Okay, now our other um, out-of-the-box software solution is called FaceMe Health. This one can be installed on a PC connected to cameras and uh, monitor health, so mask detection, uh, body temperature, and send alerts. So it can be installed at the entrance door of a store, the employee entrance can be connected to a printer to print, let's say, a, uh, a wristband for employees to say that they have been checked for the day, and so on. Here's a Okay, and as I was mentioning briefly, uh, you can connect FaceMe Security or FaceMe Health into an application uh, called U Alerts. So basically sending instant messages to the right people. So let's say there's a visitor or a VIP customer, uh, the right person can get a notification on their smart device. Uh, it can record employee uh, attendance, so for clock-in. Uh, if there's somebody who's block listed, which uh, can happen in uh, retail and banking, security can be uh, notified or if there's a stranger in the wrong place. And of course, health alerts can be sent. So it's a very nice solution, avoids having big alarms ringing at a kiosk, for example. Okay, now some of the use cases. We talk about pure smart retail. Cameras installed at the entrance of a store can help detect uh, opted in VIPs or uh, loyalty program members so they get a personalized uh, service. Uh, it can also serve to collect statistics uh, for the store, so improve uh, the setup of the store or uh, how it is staffed over time. Uh, it can be added to digital signage to make it smart. So for example, at the mall, it could be a help for a personalized directory. If there's a mall part of a chain where you are registered as a loyalty member, you can get personalized messaging. Uh, same thing for ads. Based on pure statistics, demographics, ads can be personalized and uh, propose different things if it is, for example, a man versus a woman. It can also help collect statistics about impressions of uh, different advertisements. You can add facial recognition to smart kiosks. So uh, if you have a, your loyalty member, you go to a store, you can automatically be recognized and have that personalized experience. Uh, or even with your demographics based on uh, your age, gender, mood, you can also get uh, personalized offerings. And this can happen at an uh, increasingly popular curb and drive through pickup uh, at retail or drive through banking. Uh, it can uh, be helped. You have these kiosks in stores about order customizations. 
uh, for all sorts of products. So here again, if you are registered, it recognizes you. It can help you uh, process and create your order. It can also be added to self-checkout kiosks. So you use your face as an ID to sign up, let's say, at the grocery store to the loyalty programs, get your rebates, and even use it as facial recognition face ID for a payment. If we switch to banking, uh, one big item at the moment is EKYC, know your customer. So essentially what it does is you can provide a two-factor authentication. So you match an ID that's captured through OCR with the instant facial recognition. You add anti-spoofing to make sure that it's the real person who's there. And then uh, you know that you have the right person for a one-to-one -one face match. So whether it happens at a branch or online, for multiple scenarios from just online banking transactions to applying for a loan or credit uh, or a manager investment. So there are use cases across banking, financial services and insurance and increasing demand for EKYC. It can also be used as a dual factor authentication at ATM. So making sure that uh, you, the person who's in front of the kiosk match, uh, matches the ID that is used in the kiosk. Uh, it pr 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 provides anti-spoofing. It can also go further than that, see if somebody is eavesdropping over a customer or seems to be threatening. It can send alerts or block the transaction until the person has uh, enough privacy. It can also be used for forensics. So you can process captured video footage or photo database for identity fraud or to identify p people of interest. It can be used for device login, so whether it's at the bank for the, the automated, uh, the, the tellers for kiosks, uh, for a cash registers at the store, uh, or make sure that there's no unauthorized user alerts. And then uh, facial recognition is embedded into clocking systems, so you can have a contactless, a very uh, secure and precise clock in and clock out for employees, you can have built-in alerts if wrong people are trying to enter through employee entrance. Uh, door access management can be quite important in banks or luxury stores where uh, in order to access somebody is can make sure they're not block listed uh, or they are recognized as a customer employee so that uh, they <clears throat> the facilities can remain secure. Another implementation is health kiosks at the moment. So what you start seeing at the entrance of stores, banks, is these kiosks where somebody has to check in. So make sure that they're wearing a mask, they don't have temperature, they use hand sanitizer and so on so that they gain access afterwards. And finally, when you put it all together through our FaceMe SDK or tools like uh, FaceMe Security, you can provide complete on-premise and perimeter security. So anywhere from using the cameras to manage VIP visitors, collect statistics, uh, and monitor employee access uh, to the facilities, but also to restricted areas or areas where they should not spend more than a certain amount of time. So think of freezer room at the grocery store. Uh, it will send block listed alerts. It can do group health screening. So whoever shows in front of the camera it can uh, detect if anyone uh, would have elevated body temperature or uh, would not be wearing their masks so that somebody can go uh, deal with them uh, directly. Can monitor also social distancing, so counting how many people are in a space. So these are some of the use cases. Let's talk about future outlook. There are several pilot programs across all sorts of retail stores and banks and they're normally generating quite positive reception. When you ensure a safe, uh, healthy environment for customers, most of them actually feel better about the store or the place where they are. So the market is ready for large scale deployment of these technologies. At the same time, cost effective and flexible age-based solutions are uh, coming to the market at more and more affordable prices with the right power, so it's driving adoption. And COVID-19 definitely accelerates the demand for anything that uh, monitors health uh, and provides contactless uh, options. Conclusion, 
FaceMe offers a complete set of solutions for smart retail and banking. Our flexible SDK enables comprehensive security systems and very flexible AIoT solutions. Uh, we have cutting edge security access and COVID-19 solutions with FaceMe Security and FaceMe Health. And we can provide a number of contactless inobtrusive uh, use cases uh, that are applicable in uh, situations that we know of or use cases that we don't know of yet. Um, FaceMe Security, FaceMe Health are uh, ready for the deployment and they're relatively simple to deploy. And finally, our edge-based cross-platform technology results in very cost-effective, robust, and low-maintenance deployments. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard, for sharing. Now I will pass it along to Omar from Cybersoft. Greetings, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are very happy to be part of uh, CyberLink's uh, webinar series. Uh, We'll be presenting our solutions today built on AI and AI biometrics. Uh, we have a presentation for you today. We'll be very happy to have question and answers after the, after the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Amar Qureshi. I'm the CEO CTO for Cybersoft North America and Cybersoft Solutions. Uh, we are happy to be invited for this webinar by CyberLink. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so we are happy to be part of this reinventing retail and banking to deliver safe and exciting user experience with AI biometrics. So uh, we'll have a short presentation to follow. And uh, once again, thank you for attending the webinar and we look forward to speaking with all of you if you have any questions after the webinar. We'll just go through a brief uh, Cybersoft uh, video and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, in summary, Cybersoft core expertise, uh, uh, enterprise data and key solutions, uh, all the way from discovery to implementation, build innovative solutions around core AI, like we're doing with CyberDing, FaceMe, and Spark Cognition's uh, Darwin uh, uh, model generation tool. We also develop and implement IoT solutions for real time data ingestion, logging, and visualization. Uh, one of our big, uh, um, one of our big, uh, uh, pushes uh, converting legacy to cloud computing. And we go all the way from desktop to mobile apps. Uh, and we do delve in Azure, AWS, and GCP. So today's presentation, uh, uh, we'll be presenting our solutions. Are we using uh, facial recognition and AI for meeting challenges of uh, uh, current pandemic, uh, we don't have to, I mean, COVID-19, everybody's painfully aware of it. Uh, so we'd be presenting our IPSS smart check-in uh, kiosk uh, solution with temperature and mass screening and 
coupled with that is our digital token remote queue token system. So our first presentation, so the first part is the smart check-in kiosk with temperature and mass screening. So the value proposition is uh, we're using the latest IoT technology to provide efficiency in the workflow and value chain, uh, positive identification using robust world-class facial recognition uh, with anti-spoofing technology, face me by CyberLink, I uh, stop forwarded in the world. Provide customized electronic kiosks for multiple services in one platform, which is very highly adaptable and flexible. By the way, we do manufacture these kiosks uh, 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 based on our specifications. Uh, we're integrating the temperature mass screening, uh, which is a need for the current COVID requirements. Uh, we also offer a crowd control uh, for opening spaces safely. This is also a platform for opening uh, the spaces safely. And of course, uh, everything is built on hard and secure data transmission. Uh, we've identified multiple use cases uh, in banking. Uh, it offers banking app, intelligent signage, time attendance, QMS all in one platform. For the travel industry, cruise rail line, bus rail, uh, smart check-in with ticket validation with temperature and mass screening, QMS which is the queue management system, government services, typical example would be a DPS office or any services which has people coming to them. Uh, it can, the same platform could be used for queue management, time attendance and smart check-in. Uh, retail uh, smart signage, uh, targeted advertising, uh, audience demographics and reporting, uh, healthcare, uh, smart check-in with temperature and mass screening, uh, queue management system, crowd control and all that and many, many more. This is our platform. Uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, it has all these uh, different uh, capabilities in there. So as the customer checks in, it can alert and identify uh, the senior staff uh, on somebody walking into your establishment. Uh, the same kiosk can be used for time attendance for the employees. Uh, you can also have ads running on it or corporate important messages on safety. Uh, it has built-in temperature and uh, mass um, can camera for temperature and mass screening. Uh, uh, it can also offer interactive banking kiosk function. It's a touch screen, so they can also do self-service. Uh, of course, has QR code scanning built into it. So when somebody walks into it, they can scan their token as we go into it and they can enter the premises. These are some of the technical characteristics of it. 22 inch screen uh, based on Intel. Uh, it has running on Windows operating system. Uh, the platform is modular cloud-based SaaS solution and we do offer on-prem deployment as well. Technology stack is .NET in this case and SQL Server. It does have a QR code, it has, comes in two flavors. You can either have QR code scanning with built-in printer, or you can have a hand sanitizer for simpler applications. So summarizing it, uh, smart check-in uh, with anti-spoofing, temperature mass screening, time attendance, detailed customer segmentation, using face me capabilities of detecting the age and gender and also the mood, provide interactive forms, uh, have alert possibilities, uh, CMS to content management system to push the ads, to run when there's no activity, and teleservices with QMS. Uh, this, is, this also acts like a signage where you can display your videos and other important messaging. As soon as somebody walks in front of it, it will capture the person. And if it's a visitor, it can also prompt for a coronavirus self-assessment form. And uh, the same platform can be used for, by employees. So when an employee walks in, detects automatically age, mood, temperature, gender, and uh, logs a time attendance entry. And as soon as he moves, uh, goes back to uh, showing different messaging. So he comes back in, he's gonna check out this time. Also detects if they're wearing a mask, he can give important guidance on it. And so as you can see, this is a versatile system and uh, it can be used for multiple purposes. So, so Compared with that is our digital token smart queuing management system that works hand in hand uh, with the smart check-in uh, terminal. 
And uh, this is to uh, really do crowd control or open your spaces uh, uh, safely. So you could potentially get your token sitting at home before you actually go to the, and the system will actually coach you or will guide you when you're supposed to be doing it. So in a typical uh, uh, um, queue management system, the person has to come to the office uh, or the location to get the token, then they sit, and when the number is called, they go, we, by the way, we do offer this whole solution. So we've extended this solution to get the token remotely from home. And as soon as you do that, it will let you know the wait time and the commute time in advance. And so you can actually decide if you're gonna make it on time or not able to make on time and you can preempt it as well. So it will provide you recent and recommended services. Recent is what you've last time. Uh, it tells you the travel time to the destination, wait time. It will update you as soon as there's a change in the queue. Uh, it will, as soon as you are uh, at the check-in, it can alert your senior staff, or it can also build up the queue of the people requesting the tokens. Uh, you can also integrate our software with the bank's uh, teller application, so it's all integrated and they can pull up the customer account uh, with it, and of course the teller console. This is what it looks like, easy access to the services, uh, so very easy to use, it shows everything on the screen. You can, the user can decide which services to um, uh, call for. And uh, because since we're controlling the algorithm, so we can, we can typically control how many tokens uh, to issue. And, uh, uh, and that way we can control how many people can show up at that facility at any given point. And uh, of course, uh, we do have QR code scanning once they arrive at the facility and uh, it does have, uh, it does manage the time in real time. So as for the application for the digital token, it can display the commute time, integrate with Google, or we can use other mapping software APIs uh, to compute the uh, commute time. Uh, it can also do, uh, it will display the actual wait time in each queue of the token that has been issued. Um, it can also navigate uh, to map to show them the route and maybe take a more efficient route and decide on how much time they have. Uh, they can also make a quick call to the facility. The number is right there. They can dial from there. And then if they can't make it, they can either reschedule it or cancel it. And when they get to the facility, they can uh, scan the QR code and that tells the system that the person is at the facility. So we're just gonna go through a short video. Uh, as you can see, you can see the services, recent recommended services, a user can select those and they can actually see how much commute time is and what the wait time for each uh, service. They can select that, register their phone number and they can get messages either through SMS or WhatsApp. This alerts the system to queue him up and generate a digital token and also advises them how much time is needed to be there. There are other many options. They can see their previous logs and all that. So it's a full function, full featured uh, 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 application uh, that can uh, uh, really provide that service. Uh, so a lot of people are not uh, tech savvy and they get turned off with the app. So that's why we built this whole WhatsApp uh, messenger interface, which is very simple. Uh, you just have to respond to a few uh, response uh, questions of uh, what you want to do and it will generate a token for you right within the WhatsApp and you would get notifications and everything and you can do everything that you can do on the other app. You can do it here also. The only thing we don't have in this right in version right now is the commute time because we've not integrated the Google Maps with it. Uh, we are expecting to have a Siri-like interface uh, to be able to talk into it and instead of typing the prompts and have an intelligent uh, uh, chatbot to respond uh, to natural language responses. This is a short video it shows how this works in actual. Uh, so you could be chatting with the WhatsApp uh, in the WhatsApp messenger and it will actually response back uh, with the different options uh, and then it will just carry you through generating a token. And uh, uh, system does uh, keep you uh, notified uh, 
via WhatsApp or text messages as uh, status changes. And when they arrive at the location, they can scan the QR code and that tells the system this person is now in the facility and they can manage the queues appropriately. And of course it comes with the digital token console, which is actually used by the service provider sitting in the facility, in this case, a bank teller who would, uh, uh, who would, who would call the next token and control who's there. But at the same time, we providing accountability uh, and time management to the higher management. So they can actually see who's working or if they're missing on the metrics, it can alert the higher staff and keep escalating at the top. So thank you so much. Uh, this is our presentation for the day and uh, we are so happy to be able to present our solutions and we'd like to thank uh, Cyberlink to give us this opportunity to present our solution. We look forward to the Q and A. Great, thank you. thank you very much, Richard and Amar. Uh, to our audience, now it's your turn. Uh, you can ask questions to our panelists in the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel. We'll answer your questions um, you know, as much as we have time for uh, here. So again, please uh, start sending those in and let's see uh, what questions we have uh, for you. So uh, this first one is gonna go to Richard. Uh, are there specific cameras that we have to use to incorporate face me. Can you take that one, please? Absolutely. So generally speaking, for facial recognition, mass detection, any camera that can uh, create a digital video will work. It could be a webcam connected to a USB port, any kind of IP camera. Uh, typically, they will all work as long as the resolution is uh, good enough, at least 720p, ideally 1080p and over. So uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it can work with 2D cameras as well as 3D cameras if you want to do very precise and fast anti-spoofing. So basically it covers the entire range spectrum of uh, features, quality, price uh, for these cameras. For uh, temperature measurement, uh, we are working uh, with a number of providers of uh, thermal cameras. Uh, examples are those from FLIR or Higvision but uh, there are more uh, that we're supporting, more coming. Uh, so in this case, we're more than happy to, uh, to work with our customers, let them know what's the optimal choice for them. Got it, great. So it's not just like one particular camera, there's a range of them and you're saying that range continues to grow as the technology gets more widely adopted. Am I understanding that correctly? Absolutely. Okay, great, thank you, Richard. Uh, Amar, a uh, question for you. How accurate is the temperature uh, reading on the scanning terminal? Uh, it's about uh, 0 0.3 degrees centigrade, and it has been tested by testing labs, so it's pretty accurate within that range. Got it. Good. Wonderful. I actually was just uh, talking to somebody today about, you know, with events and people are saying, you know, test uh, checking the temperature. Uh, a friend of mine had the temperature was off and then he was supposed to get surgery. And that's what they said is, no, nope, you, you know, have a fever. It's like, there's no way I have a fever. Like I just got checked by so-and-so out there. And so uh, it's got to be accurate. So that sounds uh, pretty accurate. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Richard, another question for you. Um, it's about uh, comparing your product to its competitors. It says, what makes uh, your product the right choice to be implemented and support the use cases that you shared. So I guess this is your chance to do a, a compare and contrast, please. <laughs> of course, I won't. But uh, no, uh, there are several uh, things that uh, support our claim that we offer the, the world's top solution when it comes to facial recognition. I mentioned uh, earlier accuracy. It's a big deal, obviously. Uh, if you're not accurate in recognizing people, uh, if you uh, have bias of all sorts, uh, it's not going to work. So that is number one. But beyond that, uh, but, but there are other solutions that are pretty good at that level too. Uh, but beyond that, what really distinguishes us is our flexibility and the richness of our features. Uh, the features I mentioned earlier are pretty much uh, the, the most advanced you'll find when you start adding mass detection, uh, the kind of uh, image enhancements technologies and anti-spoofing technologies we have in addition to the basic facial recognition. It's already a big deal. And now bring this uh, to work across literally any OS. So for new deployments or 
sometimes to retrofit an existing systems that can run some exotic version of Linux uh, or Windows. So we, we, we offer an optimized solution for our features across all these OS. And then to a couple other layers uh, across any kind of hardware. So from uh, PCs and workstations to uh, light devices, kiosks, uh, we will run uh, literally on any form factor. And we optimize our models across a number of chipsets from the most powerful AI chipsets from providers like NVIDIA or Intel, all the way down to low power, very affordable ARM chips. So when you bring it all together and uh, bring all the, the possibilities, uh, we offer a very unique solution and it's very likely that we'll meet our, our customers' needs. Yeah, and it also sounds like, um you know from a consumer standpoint uh, they shouldn't just pick and say well this seems good i'm going to go with that it seems like they really need to lean on you lean on a reseller lean on somebody who's integrating and representing uh, your brand in order to find out what's what's cor what, what really fits for them because it's not a one size fits all it is am i yeah. understanding that correctly yeah you're understanding correctly it's not a one size fits all at the same time uh, it's uh, it's relatively uh, easy once we have a conversation with a business partner or a customer to provide advice on uh, the right configuration options. And typically, it's it's very quick to deploy tests and implement our solution. It's something that can be done within a month. In fact, Amar, this company, has implemented uh, very specific. Uh, versions of our solution. So he probably, hopefully experienced a seamless uh, partnership with us, but that's what we're striving to do. No, I, I concur to that, uh, Richard. Uh, it is really, it was, uh, especially your team was so wonderful. It helped us all the way and we were able to quickly turn it around. So we are very pleased with it. Glad to hear this. Got it. Glad that worked out, yeah, because technology sometimes uh, is not straightforward, but if you make it easier for the implementation, the use, uh, then it actually uh, gets embraced by the end user. So again, if you have questions, um, keep looking at the, the Q&A here uh, in the question section. Uh, just feel free to uh, shoot them over to us and uh, Richard and Amar will answer. Uh, here's another one for Amar. Uh, can your system be connected or integrated with external ERP or HR systems? Yes, indeed. Uh, actually, our whole system is built on RESTful APIs. So it can either consume or it can have its APIs being consumed by external systems. So what we're seeing as a trend is a lot of HR systems out there that people are asking to interface. And we're having an API infrastructure, it makes it very easy for us to uh, attach it to popular HR systems or payroll systems out there. So it is built for that because we anticipated that uh, people would be integrating the data that we're collecting with their systems. And we built the whole architecture on it. So it's very easy to integrate. We have published APIs for that. And it seems Thank like you. an integration is hugely important because you don't want to have these disparate data centers and then try to you know, look at them either separately, look at them in silos or, or combine them. Am I understanding that correctly? Like for our audience, should they understand how important the whole integration is? Yes, it is. I mean, and uh, sometimes this is a, a, a factor for the decision also. Is your system open enough to be integrated? They don't want any closed systems out there. So this is a determining factor most of the times why they choose us over the others because of our open architecture. Got it. Again, back to the point if you can't go, that looks neat. I'm going to get that. There's a lot of digging. Lean on the vendor uh, to help you understand what's best for you. Lean on the CyberLink team. Um, uh, another question for you, Amar. Uh, can the scanning terminal system work without internet? Yes, it can uh, because this is a kind of, I call it like a mission critical application. So if this is your scanning terminal and if it goes down, then you're kind of dead in the water. So it can work in offline mode because the good part is FaceMe SDK actually works offline too. And you can download the pictures and it just says local out there. And uh, but we also have a backup uh, to it that in case your internet goes down, we can go down to like the SMS network and we can work through that also. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it can work offline. That was Great. one of our design assumptions uh, when we were designing this whole platform. Got it. Very good. Thank you for that. 
All right. Um, it looks like I'm, I think this one would be for you, Richard. Are there niche retail verticals adopting these solutions first? Uh, you saw, you shared a lot of use cases. Are there particular niche verticals inside of retail that are uh, adopting uh, the, the, your solution? Yeah, I would say at the moment, uh, most of the focus with the COVID-19 pandemic is solutions for uh, mass detection, temperature measurement. So it's these health kiosks that are very popular at the moment. Uh, anything else that will follow around uh, implementing security systems uh, through the IP camera network in uh, retail stores or some of the more forward-looking uh, experience changing use cases like uh, personal and bringing loyalty programs and uh, kiosks and uh, signage. These are things that are the object of very, uh, say very frequent discussions uh, with the retail industry. Uh, definitely uh, they are interested in deploying these solutions as uh, their stores are reopened more broadly to the public. Uh, it's less of an Im immediate urgent need, however. Great, thank you. And I guess a last question before we go uh, for both of you, um, you know, in terms of the customer experience that they're able to see that these solutions are in place and that gives them a feeling of, okay, you know, this retailer, this, uh, you know, this bank, they're really looking out for me. Uh, Amar, if you can uh, take that one first and then Richard, uh, close us out in terms of how important this is to give confidence to the, uh, to the customer. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we have been playing in the space in banking for a long time. Uh, we have uh, over a thousand uh, installed base for some of our product out there. Uh, but we've started converting this new platform to face me recently. We are very hopeful the, the initial vibes we're getting from the market. We see a lot of potential demand for it. So, but this is not something which is untested. We've tested the market. We have deployed solutions out there. Uh, for us, it's a challenge and a matter of just converting it to face me now because we feel this is definitely a much superior solution than what we had before. Great, Richard. Yeah, in our case, Cyberlink is not a new company. We've been around for over 25 years developing a very wide range of digital, uh, um, digital uh, technologies for videos and photos. If you've used a Windows PC in your life, you bought at some point a PC that came with our media player or video editor or streaming solutions. So from day one, we've worked uh, with uh, some of the largest uh, OEMs, equipment manufacturers to deploy uh, some cases, tens of millions of units of our product per year. So uh, we're totally geared up for that. Uh, we're at scale, we're a publicly traded company. Um, I'm glad uh, when Amar said that he got uh, very good support from our team. Uh, we pride ourselves in the quality of our technology, the quality of optimization, and also our ability to support our customers, not just uh, the point solution, but for the long term. Uh, most of our partner business partnerships uh, uh, date uh, 10 plus years, and uh, they keep going and they keep growing, and I'm talking about some of the, the very strategic partnerships we have. And it's the same thing with our customers. So uh, we, we are there, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we are there to support the market. Wonderful. Well, at the outset of today's program, we promised innovative technologies, and uh, certainly that was delivered uh, over the last 45 minutes. So before we go, thank you very much to Richard and Amar. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise uh, and your time with us today. And most of all, thanks to our audience for watching and participating. Uh, thanks so much for uh, attending today. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.